Hey there, Gamer Obscure here, continuing Legend of Zelda on the NES. In the previous episode, we got the white sword and finished level one. In this episode, I'm not really sure what we're going to do, but I just noticed that I have 75 rupees, which means it's time to get the blue candle. And somehow I killed two levers at the same time. That was pretty badass. But we gotta get the blue candle. It's the next order of business. Bombs and the blue candle, and you can explore about 90% of the overworld. So we definitely want to get that taken care of. We can get all sorts of money, get the blue ring, and then maybe go to level two? I mean, that would be next, right? We don't have to do them in order, but I kind of want to, just to do it. Buy something, will ya? So we got the blue candle, which is, again, a critical, critical item. I mean, it's basically mandatory. I don't know if you can finish this game without getting the blue candle at some point. So there we go. Here, this is a money moblin. It's a secret to everybody. And he's gonna give me 30 rupees, so we can start the grind for... for massive rupees here. Because I need 250 to get the blue ring. And then we'll be in good shape, so... You'll notice bushes in this game kind of have a pattern about them. And here we have this square, the square of four with these three here. There's one on the bottom right of the square. It's almost always a bush you can burn. If you see that, and that's an old lady. I don't have the letter. So there's nothing I can do about that. Here we have this kind of... I'm not really sure what to call it, but we have like half of the square with these three. And then there's this other one over here, but ignore that. So again, that one's able to... Oh, man! It's the old dude, he takes your money, he says pay me for the door repair charge, and then he doesn't even bother to fix his door. It's like the biggest scam of all time. It's like when you... It's like wrecking your car, getting your car totaled out just because the airbag went off, but like it's otherwise fine. And you get this big payout from your insurance because they totaled your car, but you can still drive it. So instead of like using that money to get your airbag replaced, you just say forget it and drive without an airbag and pocket the money. That's what's happening right there. What? Son of a bitch. Two old door not fixing guys in a row. What the hell? This one I know for sure is 100 rupees. I think there's 300 rupee money moblins in the game. This is one of them. There's one out west. Kind of in like the lost woods-ish area. And then the eastmost peninsula that was the secret is the other one. And I'm heading to the one out west next because we need... We need to get the blue ring. And all I need is 128 rupees. So let's do it, but on the way there, we're gonna hit up another money moblin. Ugh. Ugh. Man, massive lever carnage. And you'll notice the flame there was kind of in between the two bushes. It checks both of those bushes to see if they can be burned. So if you're playing like a randomizer or something, and the bush locations are random, do that and you'll save yourself a ton of time. So on that screen, it's the fifth bush from the right. You go to the last bush and count one, two, three, four, five, and that's the one you burn. And then you can get a heart container. I just, I don't understand the red potion. Like, why can't it just be a cave with an old man and then he gives you a heart container? Like, why would you ever pick the red potion? I don't get it. Again, maybe if you're doing a three heart run. Which, come to think of, I've never done. I've never done a three heart run, never done a swordless run. All the times in my life I've played this game and I've not done these things. Like, what have I been doing with my life? I don't know. I don't know if I'll do one on this channel. There's a lot of other games I want to play first. And to be honest, I'm actually, I'm now finally starting to regret eliminating, eliminating my channel from the last time. Because I had done a playthrough of Goldeneye, a double O agent playthrough, went and got all the cheats. Um, this is an old man taking your money. It's the first one I ever found when I played this game way back in the day. Um, what else? Is Space Station Silicon Valley, which is an awesome game. I don't know if I'm going to let's play that again, but we'll see. If I get to it, I get to it. I think with that, I have enough. I do. 
Alright, let's go get the blue ring. Um, what else did I do? Blast Core. I have to do a Blast Core playthrough. That's just automatic. That was one of the first LPs I ever did. And that game's awesome. And I'm, I'm, I'm due to play that game. It's been a couple years. What else had I done? I'll have to do Tecmo Super Bowl, of course. That was the first LP I ever did. That's what kicked off the channel. It's kind of funny when you when you have max rupees, which is 255, just based on oh jeez, based on how the bits and bytes and memory works, because it's 16 times 16 is 256, and obviously if if you count zero as one, like one memory slot or whatever, one part of the hexadecimal system, it's basically zero is zero zero. But it counts as one on the scale of, you know, one to 256. So then 255 is FF. And that becomes then 255 for the number of rupees. All right, so let's see, where are we at? We got the blue ring. We'll never be green again. I'm up to six minutes. You know what, since I'm over here, why don't we just do level three? Why don't we just do level three? Like, you don't have to do them in order. I did kind of want to, but... I mean, we're right here, so... We might as well. We have essentially double defense and double damage. Although, there, there's no reason to come into this... into this dungeon without the white sword if you're doing them in order. Unless you just didn't know where it was. That'd be about the only reason. Or you're doing some kind of challenge run. But yeah, I think I think we'll just clear it out now. And we'll worry about level two in the next episode, perhaps. I mean, now that I've got the candle, the bombs, the blue candle, the blue ring. Oh God, dark nuts. Um, now it's just a matter of finishing the damn game. So there we go, I can't pick those up. I mean, I could, but I wouldn't get anything out of it. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Dark nuts are a royal pain. You can't attack them from the front. You have to hit them from the sides or the back. However, there's kind of an exploit about them. They have to walk on the squares. I mean, that really goes for, like, every enemy. But just the way these things walk... It's... If you just stick to the cracks, like, the spaces in between the squares... It makes it so much easier to deal with them. Because you can, you can tell if they're going to turn into you or not. And if they're not, then you can you can deal damage. So you can either just get out of the way real quick or deal some damage. And that comes in really handy with the blue ones. Also, you can use bombs to kill them. Is this room? Oh my god, what the hell? I don't remember there being this many of them in there. But there we go. And they seem to be pretty good about dropping bombs, actually. So we'll take some out. Make, make my NES perform better. I mean, this is actually being played on a real NES. My top loader NES. I have an EverDrive N8 Pro. I'm, I'm using the 8-bit Doe controller. It's like the most modern way you can play a 37-year-old video game. And like, I am just feeling like I'm living the good life here. And I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. It feels good. It feels real good to play a game that just I love dearly instead of playing a game, you bastard. Instead of playing a game because it fits some kind of format for a channel or something. You know, that's not to say I'm never going to, to play an obscure game, but it's just... I'm gonna play what I want to play, and if people want to watch, cool, and if not, well, whatever. I'll probably use them when I take a nap or something. Just listen to them as I doze off. Because that's what I seem to like to do with Let's Plays from people that I legitimately enjoy watching. Just put in an earbud and put on a playlist and go to sleep. There's just something very comforting and cozy about it. So hey, if that's what you want to do with them as well, I won't judge you. Did you see, did you get the sword from the old man on top of the waterfall? I hit you with my boomerang. Now the fire's going bananas. Trying to kill me. Oh, key in this room. I'm pretty sure I could just go finish the dungeon right now. I don't know if I need that key. And then this is the worst part. I walk back in that room, 
And I have to listen to this stupid old man again. Like, did, did he forget that I just walked in here? This poor old man in this dungeon, and every time someone walks into the room, he's just asking them if they got a sword from the top of the old man. And then, like, what if somebody goes and gets that sword, and the next person comes along, and is like, oh, there's a sword from the old man on top of the waterfall? Cool. And then they go there, and, like, someone's already went and got it. Or does the old man on top of the waterfall, is he hoarding white swords just waiting for people to show up? Like, what the hell? So, I got the map, and as you can see, this dungeon has a very interesting shape. Um... To be fair... Well, there's two schools of thought here. On the one hand... I mean, it was a, like a cultural symbol... I think it's a Hindu thing? You know, before it was ever a hate symbol. But on the other hand, it became a hate symbol like 40 years... 40 plus years before this game ever came out, so... I don't know, you be the judge. Oh, I thought I had him! I thought I had the man handle a one-shot kill. But there we go, I got my bombs back, a heart container. That ended about as well as I could have hoped. Level three down. We'll get level two next time, it's no big deal. Yeah. Subscribe, like, comment, yada yada, all that good stuff. You know the drill. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.